And here is someone who is supposed to be a custodian of the code of conduct, so to speak. He's supposed to be the principal of the code of conduct or the discharge of code of conduct, especially as it concerns persons of public authority or political office holders. Would you place yourself at par or not necessarily by the influence that he has or the office that he has, but by the uh, substance of the job or the work that you do in advocating for the people? H how does his act meet you? How does it greet you? Well, uh, thank you so much for having me in your studios today. First and foremost, I want to appreciate the management of this uh, love world. I want to especially uh, appreciate the person, the set man, that is our pastor, Chris Oyakilome. I really want to appreciate him for what he has been doing for the youth of Nigeria and those in the diaspora. Pastor Chris, I love you. Thank you so much for believing in the youth. Sequel to your question as regards Wood Dan Ladi Humar, with all due respect to his name, I, I feel perturbed, I feel disturbed that somebody of his nature and someone who has to be able to be a legal personnel could exhibit such an human heart. It sounds aching to hearing. It is absurd. It is barbaric. It's as if those in government, they don't understand that they can't do things and go scot free because of what? Because of their influence or their power. Femme Kamifaya they did the same thing. Sabo did the same thing. Now, it is now the same man now. Who happens to be the CCTV chairman? For crying out loud, what are they being governed? Of what orientation do they have before coming to power? I, 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 I can't please myself with the chairman of CCTV because I will never exhibit such acts. The forefathers of activism, the likes of late Ganifa Wayemi, the likes of Professor Walesho Inka, will never go out in public to exhibit such an disdain attitude with no apologies. At age 36, he was made the acting chairman. Was it by his, was it by his academic qualification? Of what standard was Danla de Humar made an acting chairman, just like what my co-activist said, Haisha Yusufu, with all due respect? I, I, think, I think those in government, before they are being positioned, I think they need to go for proper reorientation of mind and body and soul. Because it's as if those they have in government cannot be trusted again. Femi Franka they did the same thing at the end of the whole thing. He came out to apologize that he was not in the right state of mind. Talking about apology, he apologized. Femi Franka they talking about him. He apologized, but in what seemed to be uh, a remedial what we would have expected to be a remedial effort by the CCT. On Tuesday, now this event happened on Monday. By Tuesday, we had the press secretary of the CCT releasing a statement. And uh, that statement, when you saw a, a statement, you know, coming from that quarter, you naturally would expect that they are trying to remedy the, you know, uh, situation. the situation. But we then saw an aggravation of the entire situation and uh, like a conflagration from the substance that played out on Monday, where, like Aisha Yusufu rightly said, the boys who were uh, calling out the CCT chairman at Banex were referred to as misgrants, and some of them Biafrans, you know. Uh, would rather, how would you react to that? I think we need to go from the Prado. First off, have you seen that statement? Yes, I've seen it. Did you, when, when you first saw the statement, what were you expecting? An apology or what? What I was expecting should have been one, addressing the situation in a code of conduct manner, not in an abysmal manner. To be sincere and pragmatic, without, without no apologies to anybody. The boys of the CCTV uh, uh, CCT chairman would not do other way around because they are his boys. So if they do the other way around, definitely they might be fired. 
So what do you expect them to do? I am giving you food. And I have a problem. You will not want to say things against me because it is me that is the one providing the food for you. My brother, this is a simple game. So where's the place of ethics? Where's the place of doing the right thing? I said that earlier, that I feel that it should be, in fact, I don't want to say it should be, it should not be heard of that the so-called code of conduct tribunal in Nigeria, the head of that particular parasitical is the one exhibiting a non-condolent attitude. So who? The security guard of our world. I, feel, I, 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 I don't know the right word to use for this man, but I'm very sure within his right mind, after he must have exhibited that such you know, act, probably he would have come back to his senses and said, how could... But, 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 the press, but the press statement negates that belief. And thank God that it was even captured. Because what we have now is the government will never want to accept that they were faulty. We are waiting for what Femme Alishina will say now. The likes of Lai Mohammed, the likes of Gaba Shehu, we are waiting for them. The press secretary to the CC chairman has spoken. He has said his own. We want to listen to what Femme, uh, Femme Alishina will say. The president is no more in Nigeria for now. He's on UK3. Medical tourism UK trip. Gaba Shehu is, is here to read his own statements. Before we now have some additional. The one thing is very, very, very sure, sure of that they will not have their cake and eat it. It's not possible. They can't have their cake and say, time eat it. They are coming back to us for campaign. 2023 is coming up again, right? And these are the same set of people that will come and start telling that we love the youth. Is this, is, is this the way of loving the youth? The same youth that you know that the youth consists of 60% population in Nigeria? I think it's high time we woke up as youth of this, you know, of this country so that the so-called leaders we have that, with all due respect, they don't exhibit an high order of manner in their conduct in the public. In other climes, a movement would have been formed out of this, and you'd hear things like hashtag uh, uh, Umar Mosco, you'd hear things like hashtag end brutality and all that in other climes. And in more senior climes, you'd even hear that the CCT chairman is choosing to resign for such a thing. In the first instance, you wouldn't have a CCT chairman engage in such an act. Uh, but in the instance where it occurs, you'd you know, have him come out, not only apologize, probably resign, but what would you call for at this time? The first thing I feel should be done is that the Code of Conduct Tribunal should be suspended while the matter is being investigated. That should be the first, because there were proofs from... As, as a custodian of the office. Yes. So it, it proves that... It also, it also, how do you call it, indicts his office. Definitely. The first thing that should be done at this point now should be the chairman of Code of Conduct should be suspended while the matter is being investigated. Because there are proof that he was the one that exhibited the, the act. And by law, when you have a matter under investigation, there should be suspension. Yes, he should not perform his duty as a chairman. Because performing his duty as a chairman is parallel to what he will be championing as a chairman there. In fact, I want to ask a question. If another government official has executed that act, and that kind of person is being brought to Code of Conduct Tribunal, how would he be tried? by him, the chairman himself, let alone he himself now exhibiting such. Aisha Yusuf has said it all. The act exhibited by Dan Ladi Humar is barbaric. It is inhumane. It is, it is, it should be exhibited by, 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 uh, let me the word to use if I will borrow it from you. 
I wish I know one. By, by, by those who have not passed through the four walls of university, this is not even about university level. Let alone it's about personality. The the CCT. I, not I to not talk of you. the chairman of Code of Conduct Tribunal. If somebody of his nature could do that, then what is the conduct in Nigeria? National Retina DJC, what are you doing? How do you think this looks before the international communities? My brother, you're asking me a rhetorical question. Definitely, we are building our personality, our image, using Dr. Okoje Wela. At the same time, we are now ampering it down again. Yes, the only person now we are celebrating now in Nigeria now is DG of the WTO. But with this act now that has gone viral now, can we attest to the fact that of a truth, an average Nigerian in the political space can beat his chest or her chest and say, yes, I have, I have, I have this personality image? Mm. There is nothing, see, this is a program that the government themselves, they should also be able to listen to reach them. Umar Idanladi should be suspended while investigation is going on. Abu, the House of Rep member, did his own in a toy shop. Abused a female attendant. attendant. And at the end of the whole thing, what was the end of the whole thing? They used the power brutalizing humans like them. So it's the same power you're saying the youth should have and go to the polls in 2023 and change the narrative. Let me see, sir. The youth are tired of recycling the same political bigots we are having in, in Nigeria. It's crystal clear. These people don't have anything to offer. At 71 years old, women are not older, should be 50 years of age. So he still falls under the category of the youth. But where is that youthful personality in him? Has it been sold or been bought? Has it been traded? What exactly can he be boast of now as a personality sharing such a high profile parasitical in the government? Okay. Um, the evening of that day, that same Monday evening, we heard that members of the SSS arrived at Banex Plaza and arrested one uh, of those who were um, trying to plea for the life of um, Sarwak at the time he was being beaten. And while that arrest went on, the SSS members shot in the air, a few gunshots and, and left. We've seen this kind of act by members of the security forces who would, instead of mediate and instead of you know, ensuring that law and order is kept, would see them being deployed as a tool by these politicians to favor them. Um, even to talk of going to the Banex Plaza, a public space, and then, you know, firing some gun, few gunshots in the air, uh, we would have thought that that wouldn't uh, occur. How does that meet you? Well, left to me, it is part and parcel of the security we have in Nigeria. Once they are being attached to any of the government personnel, a situation of things of that has occurred, and you've been called. And that's why I want to appreciate this woman that rescued a young person that was uh, being knocked down by a car in Lagos. Uh, she's a police uh, officer with a high rank, you know, in the police force there. Okay. What she did was for her to prove a solution. She carried the young man, took him to the hospital, and voluntarily donated blood 